Welcome. God bless you. It is good to be with you. This is the 10th message in our Christian Life series where we're bringing our behavior in line with our identity. The gospel is our foundation. I just can't say that enough. Christ is the gospel, his work. And the gospel was God's doing. He actually pulled it off without any help from any of us. I mean, the virgin birth, the sinless life, the sacrificial death, the resurrection, and then the promise of his return. It's all God's doing. I want to make this statement in, in light of that truth, that my righteousness has nothing to do with my salvation. That rocks some people, but Isaiah 64, 6 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have just carried us away. What a picture of all the good things we think we can do to merit salvation. Romans 3.26 says this, To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him who believeth in Jesus. It's not infused righteousness. That's not the foundation of our salvation. Infused means where uh, you and God kind of get together and a little bit of his righteousness, a little bit of yours, and you kind of come up with this formula that now we make ourselves presented to God. No. It is imputed righteousness only. Imputed righteousness is when Jesus died on the cross. All my sins were imputed or put upon him. And when I by faith received Jesus as my Savior, all his righteousness was imputed or put upon me. Romans 3.24 says this, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set, this is God's doing, whom God set forth as a propitiation through faith in his blood. Propitiation means he became the objective provision for my salvation, him and him alone. All my sin was imputed to him, all his righteousness imputed to me. What a beautiful, blessed truth. We better remind ourselves of that on a regular basis, on a daily basis. That's the truth upon which we want to build our Christian life. There's six disciplines we'll be looking at. All of them have to do with the word and prayer. 1 Corinthians 9, 23 says this, And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you, partaker of the gospel. Here's the gospel. I want to have it become something that I partake in, not spectate of. Watch it become a partaker. This I do for the gospel's sake, that I, might be, that I may be partaker of it with you. Know ye not that they who run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. Every man that striveth for the masteries is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, we an incorruptible. An athlete disciplines himself, trains, all those kind of things, for medals, trophies, money, applause, recognition, temporal. But we do it for an incorruptible crown, one that's eternal, that's awaiting us. Salvation is immediate right now, possession, present tense. Rewards are future tense and they're earned. You don't earn your salvation. So embrace those two. This is how we want to approach this thing called discipline, the disciplines of our Christian faith that help us grow and mature. All of the disciplines we'll be talking about have to do with prayer and the Word. Prayer is a learning experience. Luke 14, 1, Lord, teach us to pray. It took me 10 years to learn to pray, not how to pray. I'm still learning how, but I've learned to do it. Prayer is a part of our life. Prayer is a doing thing. Luke 18, 1, men ought always to pray, not to faint, which means there's work to it. It's the labor of it. Not works for salvation but works to bring my behavior in line with, with my salvation. Prayer needs structure. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says, to everything there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. You need to have a time and a place. Start with five minutes. Start with three minutes and say, I'm not answering my phone. I'm not talking to anybody. This is my time. I'm going vertical. I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to pray. Prayer is God's planned provision for us to have access into his grace, into his presence, <clears throat> where we can make our requests and our petitions known to God. We can share with God what's on our heart. 
we can share with God what's on his heart, the things from Scripture. Well, just a few, few reminders from the Word of God, about the Word of God, the Word and prayer, it's mentioning on prayer, and that's one, one of the disciplines we're going to talk about in this message. But the Word of God, I want to say this, get yourself a paper copy of the Bible. You say, well, I read my Bible on my phone or on my computer, that's great. But there's something about having a paper copy that will benefit you. Um, if you fall in love with the Word of God, you'll fall in love with the God of the Word. Um, this is one of the old translate or old copies of mine. In 1993, Joyce and the kids got me this Bible, and this is the one that I'm reading again now. I don't know what number of time that is, but it's just precious to me. It's full of I've personalized it. Get yourself a paper copy. Really, it's worth what you would spend on it. And then just learn to read it. There are so many benefits from just reading it. Um, it's living and powerful. It cleanses us. Sometimes critics of Christianity have said, oh, you Christians, that Bible, so you're just brainwashed. <laughs> there are times our brain needs a good washing because of all the things it's exposed to in this world, the contaminants and the dirt, the I remember as a cop, when I was a police officer, I'd see and hear things that I'd come home. I felt like somebody had walked across the white carpet of my mind with muddy boots, and I'd just open up my Bible and read a few chapters, and it would cleanse. In Ephesians 5, 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it through the washing, with the washing of the water by the word. Jesus said in John 15, Now are ye clean through the word which was spoken unto you. Just reading alone has a cleansing effect upon our mind and an openness to God and thinks he would speak to us from his word. Memorize it, meditate on it. I can't say enough. Study it, uh, those kinds of truths. Well, this message, um, our text verse is going to be Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. I'll make this three points real simple. I've learned whenever I get anxious, and we do, when you get fearful or get concerned, all of a sudden something's getting stressing us something, the best thing you can do is stop and pray. The best thing you can do. You say, well, I can't stop this particular situation. I, I don't even have time to stop. You can multitask. Pray on the move. The issue is pray. Make sure that the situation warrants prayer, pray. If you're anxious, just pray. Talk to God. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Learn to cast it in prayer. That's how you do it. You got to can handle this right now. And I know you can. Cry out for wisdom. Cry out for mercy. Cast your cares upon the Lord. You watch him sustain you. I have proven him. The Bible says, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Prayer is something where you can, I can take our anxieties and stresses and things of life that uh, we can just pray about them and cast them on God. And God is there to sustain us. Our one daughter and husband, uh, she was pregnant with, I don't know, child number four, I think. And pregnancy was doing just fine. And she was six weeks from delivery. And... All of a sudden, her amniotic fluid stopped processing. Every 24 hours, the amniotic fluid in where the baby's at changes, it cleanses, so it's kept clean. It just stopped, and she began to swell up and began to take off liters of fluid. And the baby was under stress, and now they're coming into an anxious situation. What are we going to do? And I remember they, they asking, saying, Dad, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know what we're going to do, but I know what we're not going to do. We are not going to panic. We're going to pray. And we committed this whole situation to God in prayer, and the child was delivered fine, and the things that they were fearful of that were going to be uh, negative in the situation, not a one of them occurred. And we thank God for that in everything. I, I don't know how to say that in everything by prayer and supplication. You can pray about, I lost my keys, offer a prayer. I mean, simple things, the complex things. Everything is something that we can approach God in prayer. Another thing, and everything by prayer and supplication, supplications and prayers, all kinds of prayers. That's what it's talking about. Pray all kinds of prayers to God. Uh, prayers of thankfulness, prayers of request, and uh, intercessions for other people, where you make appeals to God. Learn how to pray all kinds of prayers. 
this last point, the closing one, the crescendo to this, is with thanksgiving. Let me give you some verses. Psalm 100 and verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, and be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Psalms 91 92.1 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name. Psalms 136.1, 1, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 2 Corinthians 9.15, Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift, the gift of salvation. 1 Timothy 2.1, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Then it says, pray for all men. But don't forget to say thank you. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. You may say, Tom, I just know how to pray. I've had people tell me, I love the Word of God. I read and study. I'm involved in church. and said, but my prayer life is just good. I don't, I don't know how to get my prayer life going. I'll make this one suggestion. Start your prayer life with thanksgiving. Every prayer you ever pray, I don't care how sure, you should include some measure of thankfulness. Learn to say thank you. Learn to say thank you to God. It's a powerful thing to do. Well, and if you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. I would. What I just shared with you, I need to hear. It's something I think these are such basic messages, things we need to just become structurally a part of our lives. Be in the Word and prayer understand who you are in Christ. Hope you subscribe and pass this on to others. Until then, with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.